Hello, my name is Eric. I'm a software engineer. This is another entry in my Code With Me video series uh, where we'll be doing some live coding. Uh, nothing pre-planned here. I'll be doing my best to make minimal edits so you can see the majority of the process and I'll chop out the bits where I just need to sit and think for a moment and ponder over what direction I'd like to go in some of this stuff. And I'll be doing my best to speak about all my thoughts and the problem solving process and give you as much insight to follow along as possible. Uh, today we are still working on our Kanban task tracker application, which is a front-end mentor challenge. If you're not aware of front-end mentor, uh, .io, they are an excellent resource to help you build your skills as a front-end developer. Uh, they offer challenges and uh, provide design files and uh, it's basically just here's what it should look like and the functionality, go make it work. Uh, so here we are. Uh, building this with React, um, and I think today, the last time I did this, uh, I did a uh, delete modal for the task, so we come in here and we delete task, and uh, you see we have this modal pop up. I still have to change this delete color right here um, on this button, but besides that, uh, this is all working properly. We can cancel out, we can click on the background to dismiss it, and clicking delete removes the task. So. That's all well and good. Um, I think today I want to do the um, maybe create new board button. That sounds fun. Um, I have a board modal that I previously worked up. Uh, so we can take a look at what that looks like. Let's just pop that right in here. Board modal the one. Oops. Don't really need that. And that's what this looks like. Uh, we can enter a board name, which is what's going to be here, this like platform launch. Um, subtasks to do, doing, um, add new column. So I, I don't that must be wrong. That must not be subtasks. Um, that must just be columns, right? Uh, I do have Figma open here, and this is actually the one. So it is columns. So that's great. So we can we can work with that and change that around. I'll do that now, just so we don't confuse ourselves later. Um, so subtasks. This should be columns. All right. And this is this isn't going to be too complicated. Um, hopefully, uh, th this should just follow along pretty closely with, um, we already have a new task uh, button here that's going to do the same kind of stuff for us where we're going to enter some values here, we're going to update the state of, we'll, we'll make this state uh, in an object, we'll be adding new tasks, we'll do this with an array, um, and each of these will be its own object that we can call the index to remove them. And we'll reference our other code so we don't have to completely redo everything from scratch here, but this will be the way this thing works out. Um, so where, um, let me get rid of that. I don't really care to look at that modal there right now. We'll put this back in where it should belong in just a moment. A new board here. Um, well, the create board button is is right here on our sidebar, right? And <clears throat> we're going to be sending um, the main board data lives here. We're in our app file, app.tsx, which is our highest level, really, of this application. We've got a main.tsx, but that's just where app lives, right? So I'm not really considering that. Um, and that's where I have my, my theme wrapper for my context there. So I guess I technically could have this live here. It doesn't, you know, I'm mapping over the specific boards here with board view. So like I'm looking at my main, um, my data here and within my data, which is a giant object in a .json file, we map through the boards array, and for each board, we're mapping out this board view component, and we're only 
rendering uh, based on what the active board is, based on clicking here, which updates a state, um, and set visible and uh, which is it? Let's see. Visible. Yeah, if visible is equal to board.name. So every time I click on one of these things, it updates visible to whatever that board name is. And if board name, you know, if we click on marketing plan, it updates visible to marketing plan. So that one's matched and then it renders that particular board view entry from the mapping process. So um, adding a new board, we don't really need to have any of the current board information. We're going to make all that up. So I guess the modal actually can live right here, right? It can live in the app um, component. So I guess I'll just undo what I did with bringing this thing in. Um, but I also don't need this to be visible all the time. So I'm going to have this live in a state. And uh, we did the same kind of thing with show add task here. So let's do const uh, show add board and set show or we'll capitalize that add board we'll use state and we'll default that to false and then we'll do we'll wrap this around in our brackets and we'll say show add board question mark then return board modal and if not then null right um, so that's our ternary operator um, to determine whether or not this thing should be rendering based on the state of show add board. And we're going to, of course, need to be able to click this create new board button uh, to change that visibility. And that's all that button's going to do for us is just update the state of show add board to true. Um, and just like the other modals that I have, we'll put a background on here so we can click on that background and revert that state back to false. So let's do that stuff first just to get that out of the way. Um, let's go, first of all, let me go into the board modal and on class name here, I just have theme, um, which isn't right at this point. This should be, if, if I'm using context here as theme, um, this should be theme dot, uh, theme dot theme technically, because that's how this context is working for me. Um, but I also want to make this, um, a, uh, I just want to throw dot modal on here too as a, as a class name, just modal, um, since I have a utility class, which I reviewed in the previous video. Um, so we can do, um, we'll do this, whoops, not one. We'll wrap this in our back ticks. We'll put this in its own uh, bracket so we can do some temporal literal stuff here and we'll call this modal. And uh, let's, while we're at it, go to the task modal. And we've got this background here in this div, this ID is modal background. We're just gonna grab this as well. And I'm gonna put this right on top, just like the others. Um, we need to put a fragment here because React can only return one big chunk, right? It's got to have the same wrapping tags. So having two separate divs is a no-no in React world. Um, I'm also going to get rid of my on-click event for now. And we're just going to have that background visible. So let's um, go ahead and pass through from our app our set show board into this board modal, which right now doesn't have any props to it, so we'll be adding uh, that as well. So we'll do set, show, add, board. Ugh, this, these variable names are long, but I guess they're uh, specific and obvious, right? Um, the more specific and obvious I can make my code and still have it be, uh, you know, readable less need for a bunch of comments and stuff to further add mass to this thing. So I guess I'm fine with that. Uh, set show add board. And then we go back into, actually, before I move to board modal, let me copy the React Dispatch info here. 
uh, because we know if we're going to do in I'm using TypeScript, so type, uh, we'll call this props. You can call that whatever you want, but I prefer props when I'm using it to type out my props. It just makes sense to me. Um, we can paste in our set show at board, which is a react dispatch react set state action of a Boolean. And then in here I can destructure my props and I can just bring in set show add board. Um, you could just you know, not destructure, but I, I prefer destructuring, uh, and that's the type props. So that's eventually going to go away. My, my lagginess continues to persist with my screen recording and doing all of this. Um, so that's good. I've got that. And then we can do add that on click back to our background modal, uh, or modal background, excuse me. And we will just do a anonymous function here and we'll call our set show add board and we'll change that to false. So um, the only thing left now before we can test this thing and make sure this is all working of just showing and dismissing this modal is actually making this create new board button work, right? Because we haven't done that yet. So within app, uh, this is also where our sidebar lives. So we can do the exact same thing, pass down our set show add a board as a prop. Uh, can I wrap this around? Oh, this is so goofy looking um, <laughs> of how all this is being displayed. Prettier is doing its thing and not letting me, um, you know, typically I would format this stuff this way. But I'm letting Prettier do its thing. So whatever, I'm not going to stress too much about it right now. Set show add board is there. We're going to do the exact same thing we just did. Go to our sidebar, which is here, which already has some props that we passed in. So we can just add this one to the bottom. Save that. We can, let's give ourselves a little more breathing room here. We can word wrap this as well. We can bring this in in our destructured props set show add board. And which one is my button here? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, you know what? I think I have that button actually within board list component, right? So this whole thing is a component together, which shows the number of boards, maps through the board names, has a create. So we'll have to actually pass this through one more time to this board list component. So set show add board equals set show add board. Excellent. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this again. We can go into our board list component, which I think is in view. Nope, nav bars. Board list component. There's our props that I previously set, set up. Put it in there, doing the same stuff again. Just passing down props, passing them down. Set, show, add board. Yes, thank you, autocomplete. And now here's our new board button right down here. Excellent. We can just throw an on click on here. And we can call an anonymous function on this bad boy. Set, show, add, board, give me my autocomplete, thank you, and do that to true. Right, cool. What did we just do? Quick recap. We made a state to handle the visibility of our add board modal. We passed some props down to the appropriate places. We set some on-click events. We set the background to dismiss. We set this button to uh, dismiss, I should say, set the state to false. We set this button here to set the state to true. Um, and we also added the modal um, class, which in my index here, I did this in the last video too, but um, I've got a whole bunch of, uh, if we scroll up to it, got a whole bunch of utility classes that I've created. And uh, modal is one of those, which just defaults this thing to a fixed position. So if there's scrolling going on, it's not gonna move around. I do have scrolling um, or overflow uh, hidden 
on the entire body of this thing and the scrolling is only enabled on the div element of that board view um, just uh, things go off the screen to the side and typically you're not going to have a left and right scrolling on your web pages if you do things are going to get funky in mobile views your desktop browsers are going to be able to handle that but mobile views are going to shrink that all up and make it look all weird so you want to make sure you don't have any kind of side to side scrolling and if you do limit it to a div and that's going to or whatever your section is and that's going to handle that correctly so um, anyway quick ramble let's test this thing out let's click our create new board oh no <laughs> That's a fun start for us. Did I not save everything? Save all. Let's try that. Let's do this again. There it is. Okay, cool. Um, so we see we've got our pop-up. We see the background uh, kind of dim itself a little bit. That is our um, background div that I had previously set up for all of my modals, um, which is not a component, right? I'm just putting the div in there and giving it the, the right ID. So that's all CSS stuff. Um, here are our inputs, there are buttons that these don't do anything yet. We've got um, in the background here, now if I click, it goes away, just like we expected. So that is working fine and was super easy for us to set up because I have done a lot of the work to set this up previously. Um, I, I wish I had started this series earlier to allow people to follow along with the entire process, but here we are and we're going to finish this project up and then maybe start something else later on and do the same kind of thing. Anyway. Let's get into the real meat of what this thing is going to be doing for us. Um, and uh, let's, you know, we're, like I said, we're just going to do the same kind of process that I had set up previously, but I'll refrain from just going right into my code and copying stuff over um, just, just to kind of maybe see if I mess something up and challenge myself a little bit more to try to uh, do all this stuff, quote unquote, from scratch again. Um, and I'll talk through my thought process a little bit. So uh, I'm going to close this task view card. I'm going to close board list because I don't need it. I'm going to close sidebar now because I also don't need it. Um, and the only things we have, and I'll close delete modal. That's still open from my last session. So the only things we have right now are app and board modal, which um, at this point, really the only thing I technically need is board modal, but whatever, we'll, we'll run with this. Um, I think also I'm going to open up my, well, well, we'll go to it when I need it, but my interface file, which has a bunch of my types set up here. Um, so there's a couple things I want to do, right? Number one, I'm going to handle this as just kind of a basic form. It's not, you know, listed as a big form. It's just the individual elements, but whatever. Um, um, I envision this as like an internal application and like if you have something set as a form with HTML, like your actual HTML elements as a form, um, you get things like, um, you know, if, if your user had filled out forms previously, there might be some suggested autocomplete stuff that a form would automatically help carry over. In this case, we're not going to have that. Um, I don't want that here. We're not doing like address stuff, right? It's super important with like address stuff. Um, but I'm envisioning this more as just an internal application. And I don't know if I was working with an actual team that wanted that stuff, cool, we do it, but I'm just making this work in this way. So anyway, um, we're going to set an object. Well, let's, let's, this is going to be an object at some point, right? Let's go look at my uh, JSON file here, right? So we've got, and let's uh, let's give it some room to breathe. So what this is going to be making for us once we're done is we've got this giant boards, this this big object that has a key of boards in here, which is an array of all of the individual boards, and each board is a big object, right? So here's our from here all the way down to somewhere. Looks like here um, is, no, actually, it's way further down. Uh, but this is one column of our board object, right? The main thing I have to worry about with boards, a board really just consists of a board name and however many columns this board is going to need. I don't know 
if there's any requirement here um, to make a certain number of columns required. I, I don't see why there would be. I mean, I guess you'd want at least two, right? But, you know, that's the whole reason of a task tracker is to have like a to do and a done or at the very least. Um, but right now, just for this video, I'm just going to focus on getting this thing set up and getting the operations working to make our new board object with a board name and however many number of columns we have and adding that to our uh, big board object over here. So, um, first things first, let's work on board name. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, I don't need to make this an object because the only thing that's going to be in that object is one uh, one value, right? One key value pair, which would just be board name. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something like this. We're going to have a state for the board name, and that's going to be on its own. And then we're going to have a state for the columns, which is going to be an array. Oops, an array, right? And that array is going to start off empty. Um, I guess I could start it off with anything in there, but just let's start it off empty. And we, if we want to make adjustments later, we can do that. And then every time we update um, or click this add new column button, we're going to take our column uh, array and we're going to push an object into that array. And that's going to be, what does it look like? What, what does our uh, object look like? In our case, it looks like it's just going to have, well, it's going to have a name and it's going to have tasks with an empty array because at some point we need to be able to push tasks onto that particular array. Um, we have an add task feature already set up here. Um, and if I go look at the actual Immer function that I have set up that does the final add new task thing. Um, it's not making a task array, it's just pushing onto the task array that should already exist, right? So where's my, here's my Immer functions, um, add new task, we send in a whole bunch of board data and index and the new task. Um, we find the right column and then we go dot tasks dot push, right? So um, I guess also technically if tasks doesn't exist, we, we could make it, but I don't want to worry about that. I want to, um, I want to assume and program this in a way that anytime I'm making a new board, I want my task to exist. I don't want to have to worry about trying to make that later on. So we're going to make, we're going to make that exist. So we're going to push our object, um, and then just looked at this and unless I'm making changes, it's not staying open. So it's just going to be name and tasks, which is going to be an empty array. So we'll do that, I guess. Um, so my object will be name, whatever my name is, and then tasks, which will be an empty array. And that's going to be our object for each column that we make. Um, and I've got types for this stuff, right? So now we'll, we'll look at the interface file that I have and I've broken down each of the components of these things into their own type as well as a board data type, which made things a little bit easier in some situations. Uh, I don't need this anymore, so we'll get rid of that. Um, but we can see the same thing here, right? So we've got, um, if we're making a new board, go away, if we're making a new board, we've got our board type, which has a name, which is a string, columns, which is an array, and the columns have, each column has a name and it has tasks, which is an array. So um, we're going to follow along with this and, and not change anything. So let's uh, start by doing our um, state for the board name, right? I've already got my comment here. Let's just do some code underneath it. So we're already, we've already got use state. Uh, I don't have use state in here, so let's bring use state from React. 
and then we can do const. Uh, we'll do board name. And, oh, actually, can I do board name? What are my props in here? Uh, just just show uh, set joy board. Okay, so board name and set board name. And we're going to equal that to just a use state value of an empty string. Cool. Um, I can do this in a couple of different ways. I guess I could make a function here that handles the change event. I'm only going to handle the change event in this one field. So I don't, I don't know that I really need to do anything different here or more complicated. Um, so I know the one thing I'm going to need to do before I really do anything else is the value of board name, my uh, input here. I'm going to want to tie value to board name state. And then let's just do on change. Um, let's just start off by doing an anonymous function and let's send our event. Oops, not three. Send our event in this function. Now let's just console.log and let's look at E. Bring my console up. Probably going to have some random errors here that I'm just going to dismiss. Probably, uh, we'll, we'll double check things later to see if anything is impacting us, but um, on change we get E, right, which has all of our stuff in here, and the only thing we care about is um, e.target.value, right, um, and then we're going to want to update the e.target dot value we, we uh, update set board name with that so um, we should be able to just uh, well let me do e dot target dot value right and I guess I should take this away from uh, I don't have to yet because what, what we're gonna see is you're not gonna see anything in the input now right because value of this input is tied to board name but we're not updating board name yet we're not doing anything with it if I remove that value, then we're going to see this updates, right? And now we have the, the whole thing in there. Um, but we want those we want those to be tied together, right? There should be one uh, ultimate truth, I believe it's called, on this particular input. So we know our value should be whatever board name is. And we can just change our console.log to set board name. And now Instead of just console.logging our value, we are using e.target.value to update set board name. So now if I do this, uh, I'm not going to see anything in the console. Um, so that's going to be just doing that. But we could do a quick test to, to see, I guess, what board name is, right? Let's, um, let's make this different. I don't want it to show up as we type. I want to, uh, let's use the add new button. We've already got some buttons here. So let's just do like an on click here. And uh, let's just do another anonymous function and just console uh, console.log our board name, right? So that anytime I click on add new column, now we can see what should be the state of our board name, right? So if we do test board name, we can see that we've got that state updating appropriately. So cool, excellent. We're, we're making some smooth progress here on the easy stuff. Um, easy stuff at this point if you've done a bunch of React forms and input updates and things like that. Um, probably not so easy if you're just now learning React, so I'd like to stress this isn't a tutorial explicitly on how to do things in React, but hopefully if you find some of this explanation helpful, I'm trying to do my best to just reinforce my own learning on this stuff. Um, so if you find any of this helpful, that's excellent. There are also tremendous resources out there of full in-depth from, you know, beginner stage tutorials to follow along with and hopefully uh, learn some stuff. But also build your projects, learn some information from tutorials, build your own projects, build some projects without following anything along. You're going to you're going to have so much uh, 
so much more progress and really reinforce your own learning doing that stuff. Okay, back on track. We've got our board name updating. Let's talk about columns, right? So right now I just have these here static. Um, these two inputs are, are just there. They're not doing a whole lot. Um, but I want to have the state for columns, right? And I want my column state to actually be an array. Um, and it's going to be an array of columns here. This is my type, right? So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to import, I'm going to import, did I just call this columns in my file? Export type columns, yeah. So we're going to import, I have to do this columns because it's not a default export. It's just an export with a bunch of other exports. Um, so we destructure that. Import columns from, uh, where does this live? It's not there. It's in my utilities. Nope, come on. Utilities slash interface. That should do that for us. So now if we do uh, const, we'll do columns and then set columns. And that's going to be use state, right? And this is going to be an empty array. Um, but it's not just going to be an empty array. Um, I want this to be an empty array of our columns, right? Um, and I think, what do I do? That, yeah, columns array, right? So now if I look at this, um, hovering over columns, it, you can see we have an array of the columns type and that, um, the cool thing about TypeScript is it also kind of helps us uh, with, I guess, documentation on code, right? So if you have things defined or strongly typed things, you can have, you don't have to go back and refer to other places. If you're now just working in this particular file, there's my information on what should be in columns, right? Um, you know, the other way, if I didn't have types set up on this, I could do a default state here and have done something like, you know, tasks, um, you know, uh, or no, I'm sorry. Um, what is this name of whatever? And then my, uh, I'm already blanking on what, what we were just looking at here. So columns name and then tasks array, right? Yeah, tasks, um, which is an empty array. And if that was the case, like you can see TypeScript is trying to infer some of this stuff here. Um, you can see we've got our, our information here that's being inferred by just what I'm putting in as a default state. So I am uh, typing this out because we've got all this stuff. And let's just undo enough times and we can see how much um, cleaner this looks for us because of our typing already. Anyway, I'm rambling about stuff. This isn't a tutorial, I'm not trying to teach anything, I'm just trying to code. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we've got a columns array, uh, which is a blank state, a blank, blank array in our default state. Um, and what we wanna do is we wanna have a function to, as we kind of listed out here, push um, more objects onto our empty array here. So let's just do like let um, add column equal. It's going to be, you know, a function. We're using arrow functions here. And we basically want to, um, in order to update state of an array or an object in React, uh, that state is immutable. So we need to copy our array, right, using spread notation. Um, I should say using spread and then from there we can do our copy and push on our object um, that we've already kind of said we want to do up here so um, let's do this stuff we're just going to call this let copy equals uh, our it's an array we're keeping it as an array and we're spreading this and this is columns if we didn't put this in the bracket, uh, the array brackets, it wouldn't be an array anymore. Um, and then we're going to add on to that an object which has name, 
and in this case we'll just leave that blank um, and then tasks which is going to be our blank array there right so and then um, before we do anything else let's just console.log copy let's look at that um, and uh, what I do want to do as well is we will let's do the set state here too um, but we still will look at uh, the console and see what's up set columns will be copy right so um, we will on add new column let's set the on click there now and I can just call add column without any kind of additional function set up. Um, so once I click this button, it should take our current blank array, push a new object to it after it does the spread. Um, we're going to see what copy looks like at that point, and then we're going to set that. We're not going to observe the setting at this point, um, but we'll see that in the console every time we click a button. So we click our button, we have our array with now one entry here because we started with nothing. Um, which has an object of with name, which is blank, and tasks, which is an array with nothing in it. We add again. We have two objects in there now. We add again. We have three objects in there now. Awesome. That's exactly what we want. Um, I realize I don't have a button set up on here yet to delete this, so we will um, we'll have to work through that as well. Um, but we'll get there. So. Okay, in effect, that's done, right? We've got our function to set up, um, adding the columns here to this array. And now I wanna actually be able to see that change visually on our modal here. Um, so I'm going to, I've got this um, container, right? Where these subtet, where this, um, it's this for subtask, right? Again, I, I call these the wrong thing, so. Um, this should this should say column, so let's uh, get rid of that and put columns. And that's the only thing I have that's called columns in here now, right? Well, well, these elements, yeah, sure, cool. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this second placeholder one, and within our container, we're going to map through our array. So what's, what in effect is going to happen is once we map through this array, so for each element in the array, we'll map out an input with a label. And, um, well, actually, I don't need to map out the label. I just need to map out the input, right? Otherwise, I'd have columns under over every single one. So we'll map out the input. And we're going to start with no input because it's a blank array. And every time we add, we should see a new input show up for us. So, um we will, uh, we're going to do some brackets here because we're in JavaScript land and we need to do columns.map and that takes a function which we will just pass through here and um, this should default to us for every element then we just return uh, this whole bad boy. Am I doing this right? Yeah, cool. So now we see all three of them just popped up automatically, right? Because our array, because we've already clicked the button a couple of times, had three objects in there. And we can see as I click, more are gonna show up here, right? So I'm gonna dismiss this and I'm gonna open that back up. So we start off again with our initial state, which is a blank array, right? Um, the state isn't staying around because we dismiss the, um, the modal. So, you know, we're, we're unmounting that, so to speak, and then remounting, re-rendering that element, and we start off with a blank array. So that maybe looks funky. Um, I don't know. Again, this is not a project that's being released professionally anywhere. It's just part of my portfolio now. Um, but, you know, clearly we can see this is working the way we want it to work. And then we're also going to need to um, remove those inputs. So let's, in order to do that, huh, I think what I did previously and I'll do again here because it works, is I'm thinking about the box model, right? And um, if I look at the Figma file, we can see if I zoom in on this thing, it's got a little X button over here, right? Which is a button. Um, 
and is rendered with each column, so it's going to be grouped in. Um, and this is a box. Can I draw on this? Where's my actual pencil? Everything in web development is a box, right? Um, so we've got this, of course, a hormonal is a box. This columns container I have set up as a box. And then each of these, the input with the X button is going to be its own individual box, all right? So um, what I'll do is I will do uh, another, just do another div here and we'll give it a class name of, I don't know, we're like calling this container, we can call this um, columns container. Oh, it did not give me my, there we go, columns, cont can't do a hyphen, that's right, okay. Uh, it's freaking out for that. I can do a hyphen, <laughs> but it just doesn't like it with Emmet for some reason, so let me just call this columns. Um, and then I'll call, uh, Do I want to call it container? I don't know. We'll leave it as columns for now. Let me drop this uh, div down here. I need to change how I'm returning this. And that is how I'm going to return this now. Um, let's see if anything gets funky yet. Yeah, so we got some weird formatting stuff here now, but that's fine because we're going to just adjust that stuff in CSS a little bit later anyway. I've got a little that over there showing up because uh, prettier doing its thing and throwing semicolons in where they don't necessarily need to be. Um, and let's throw a button in here, right, which is just going to be our X button. And okay, it doesn't look pretty right now, but we'll get there. Um, I have a, uh, I have an image for this, I believe. Um, we can import, uh, we'll, we'll call it import delete from, let's see where my assets are. Uh, I believe it's icon cross. I think that's right. Can I not call this delete? Yeah, I can't call this delete, so let's call it remove. Can I not call this remove? <laughs> okay, let's call this uh, delete call. That's better, okay. So instead of our uh, uh, X button, let's put an image in there. We'll make our source delete call and we'll have an alt just be delete column. Cool. So let's see, oh man, I hate the white background. Let's fade that out here. Okay, so now we have a different looking X. Cool, that's fun. I don't know why this keeps popping up. I do have a key prop on this, unless I'm just crazy, but whatever. Um, so that button's not doing anything yet. Let's make that button do something. Um, <clears throat> excuse me while I drink some water here. Okay, let's make a function to remove a column. Do let remove column equals uh, a function, again I'm using arrow functions, I never really used to and I'm just trying to get in the habit of using them. Um, so we're going to remove a column, what do we need to do here for this? Uh, we're going to do a very similar thing to what we're doing in add column, right? We're going we're gonna to make a copy and we're going to spread uh, the current columns, right? And then from that copy, I'm going to splice out one of these columns. That's just an array method that we can use. Uh, which will just take whatever array or whatever index that we specify and we'll remove that particular item from this array, right? So right now we've got an array with uh, one, two, three objects, let's say, two, three. Um, I need to be able to call this function and say, okay, I want to remove this, just this, this, this second item in that array, which is index of one, right? Because we start off with zero whenever we're talking about indexing. Um, and then we do splice and specify whatever index we're getting and we remove that. So um, we are going to have to do a couple things here with this function. I need to accept an index, right, which is just going to be a number for TypeScript. 
so now it knows. And um, we need in our map function to also have the uh, index available to us, right? So map takes like two arguments, whatever your first argument is, which is your elements, and then index. Um, so let's let's just make sure that works for us first, just by seeing the index. So on our button here, let's just do an on click, and let's just do an anonymous function, and let's just console.log our index. So whatever one of these x's I click on, we should see 0, 1, and 2. Let's see if that works out for us. 0, 1, and 2. Excellent, because every time we map, it knows what index it's at. We're passing that index into our map function, so all this stuff in here has the access to index, so we can call and use that, which is great. So instead of just console.logging it, we actually want to call remove column, and we want to pass index to remove column, right? So um, like I did before, I can just get rid of this and do um, remove column, right? And now uh, we can, here we should be able to console.log our index, and we should get the same exact thing of 0, 1, and 2. Cool, that's working out for us. Um, and now we can actually implement our function. So we know we have copy of our columns and then we can just do copy dot. Um, and we're gonna splice this bad boy. And splice has a start number and then delete count. So whatever index number we're starting at and then how many elements from that array we're going to remove. In this case, we're starting at index and we're only gonna remove one, right? And then we're going to um, update our columns uh, state, so set column, columns, uh, with our new copy element uh, or array, right? So now uh, let's, let's check this out just to make sure we're getting everything we want working correctly. We're gonna throw in some numbers here. One, two, and three. Man, I cannot type today. Three, and if I click on this middle item here, this middle X, it should remove just the input that has two in it. Uh, did not. <laughs> so that's not great. Uh, what did I do wrong here? Let's take a look of console.log copy. And let's not, well, I don't really care about what's happening for that. So let's do two and three. Uh, let's clear this. Let's click on one. I mean, clearly, oh, duh, of course. I, <laughs> we didn't tie our data here yet to each individual um, input. So yeah, of course, it's not gonna look correct when we do that. Let's do that now. Um, we can, let's, let's assume that our splice is working correctly because it looks like it should be. Um, it's just we don't have state on these names yet, so that's not going to look right for us. So forgive me if I'm confusing anybody. Let's continue on with what we're doing here. And we can get rid of this stuff for now. Um, so we need state on these names, right? How, do I, how am I handling this exactly? Um, in a similar way, right, of whatever our, um, just, just like we're doing here, except we are going to need to tie this to, um, again, the index, right? So if we're gonna update column name, so if we do a function that says like, you know, let, um, I don't know, update, whatever, column name, uh, let's do column name, just to shorten the sound just a little bit, uh, is a function, oops, uh, basically we're gonna, um, again, we're gonna need the index, right, and um, we want to, we can do the same exact thing here, um, where we can, at whatever index we pass back to this, we can just, within our copy, update the particular name of the object 
at that index, right? So we've got an array here. We've got a couple of these bad boys going on. We know each one has a name to it, you know, whatever. And this has a name of uh, something. Let's forget the third. Let's just work with two for right now. Yeah, go ahead. Freak out. It's cool. Um, I'll find. I'll comment it. I'll comment it out. Don't worry. So once we get an index in here, when we copy our array, then we'll just be able to do copy, which will be an array of whatever index we, we want to call, uh, copy of whatever index we pass in, dot name, because we're calling, you know, if, if that doesn't need to be capitalized, if this is copy, this array here is copy, I'm gonna uncomment this because it does look prettier. If this entire array is our copy, then we're gonna say we need to change the second object in um, copy or index one. We pass through index one. We say copy of index one, which would be this dot name, because we know we have name in there in an object, so we can use a dot notation, and then just do whatever the name is gonna be. So we know we need to pass an index again, which is a number. <clears throat> um, and then we can do the same kind of stuff we were just doing. So now I'll copy all the, or I'll comment all the stuff out. So we can do, <clears throat> let's copy equal our columns. Because, you know, state again is immutable. We're not adjusting an item while it's in state. I'm going to darken this out. Then we should be able to do, let's just test this one at a time, right? Um, uh, copy uh, is now our new array uh, of index, whatever that is. Maybe we, uh, I'm not gonna console.log this stuff yet because I don't, I don't personally want to test every individual step of this and it's gonna be more annoying than not. So let's just do what we think should work. So copy of index um, dot name Thank you, TypeScript, for my uh, my typing coming through for me. And then we can just see equals. Um, what we're also going to need here is we're also going to need the event, right? So we looked at that previously with the e.target.value. Um, so we can handle this in a couple ways. I can either pass in the event to the function, which I don't really think I want to do because why bother? Or we can just pass in e.target.value. Um, and just accept that as a parameter, and we'll call that name, right? So we can also say we're taking a name, uh, which in our case is just going to be a string. So TypeScript knows that. And we can say copy of index.name is just going to be equal to name. And then we update copy uh, or update our columns. Well, yes, we can just, we should just be able to do set columns. Uh, copy, and that should, should, I think, be what I want to do here. I, did I do it this exact way on the other one? I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe we'll go take a look at what I did last time and see if I did something different here. Um, so let's review real quick. We've got our update column name, which takes in the index that we're updating of that array, and the name that we're going to change it to, which will be e.target.value. We make a copy of our current columns state we take copy of index whatever we're passing in, dot name. We change that to equal name. We update our columns array. So now if we go in here into our input, now we're gonna put an on change handler, right? Let's bring this back up. So this is our input that we're gonna put an on change handler to, on change. And we're gonna do a function because we need the event. And we're going to call update call name, which we know takes the index. So we're going to give it the index. And it also needs the name, which is a string, which in our case is e.target.value. Okay. So let's, um, let's do what we did last time. And I guess I can do a quick test and just say like, all right, I know I've got three objects here and now my array. If this is one and two and three, if I get rid of just one of them, 
that's still not working the way it should be working. So what am I doing wrong? Let's take a look at everything we're doing here. Um, let's console.log copy. And let's see what happens. So if we type a name in here of one, every every on change, it's console.logging. That's changing. Okay. Two. It's looking like it's updating the names correctly. Three. So that's great. So what's so something's going wrong with my my splice then I guess, right? Um what is happening with my splice? Because if I click on three, well if I click on one, one should go away, but it's clearly not, right? So I know my name updating function is working properly, so we can get rid of that console.log because that's we see it here. Um, and now if I do this again, and if I change two to something else, but leave that third one blank, uh, we see we have, oops, why is it printing up there? Oh, right, I got rid of console.log, of course. Right. So if we change that, we see the appropriate one being updated. So all that's working out fine. Let's look at what's coming in. Let's hear console.log index. See what up. Every time I remove column. That's correct. Um, what am I doing wrong here? Console.log copy. So now we can actually look and see that we've got names on this stuff. Let's get rid of this. Let's add some tasks in here. We'll do this as one. We'll do this as two. We'll do this as three. And you know what? Just for the sake of having it, let's make our button at the bottom have an on click where we just look at our um, we just console.log our columns. Uh, is that what we call this? Yes, okay. So we can see here we have our array of columns, one, two, and three. And if I X out two, I'm getting the index of one. Oh! Of course, I said this before and then I didn't even do it. <laughs> I didn't tie the value to the inputs. Always tie your value to your inputs, right? Man, what a what a goof. All right, so now my value uh, is equal to, in this case, I, I'm mapping through the array of these objects. So um, each element in here, uh, we can do element dot name, right? Because this, each object has name and tasks and the value is tied to name now. <laughs> now this is going to work correctly. So let's, let's swap these out. We'll do one, two, and three, right? If we look at our, I'll clear this out. If we look at our object here or our array of objects, there's one, two, three. If I X out the two, hey, Look, everything I did works correctly. I just missed one thing in value. This is the stuff that happens. This is uh, this is what you don't see in, in your typical code along videos. <laughs> uh, fun. Okay, so that rocks. Um, we're, we're doing good here. I'm gonna take another drink because I'm talking a lot and man, this is a lot on my throat. Cool. So that's all working out for us now, right? Um, I, I think the more interesting thing right now for me to do is to make add a column, uh, I mean, sorry, not add column, create new board actually work before I finish up the visual changes here in CSS. Um, I don't know what people that are gonna watch this particularly care to see, um, but we'll do both. Um, but I'm gonna start with the, with, the, with the fun function stuff. So um, let me get rid of any console.log stuff I have in here still. Uh, which we have that and that, so everything's working as it should. Cool. 
Um, so even though I did this before, I still messed up and had to do a little bit of debugging, but that's, that's what it's all about, right? Okay, final thing we're gonna do here. So we've got our name for this board in its own state. We've got our columns in their own state. Um, what I want to do is I wanna combine them into a single object, into a board object, right? And then I'm gonna send that over to where I have my immer functions and we'll write an immer function to inject this thing into um, the total object that we have, which is controlling the entire state on this. Um, so what, what am I gonna do here? Um, let's just think for a very brief moment where I've got in my board modal, I don't have the state for the boards. I'm not going to pass it in because I don't really care to do that here. I want board modal just to be responsible for making a new board object technically, but I don't want it to be responsible for adding it to our whole big data object. Um, I just want this to be responsible for making the stuff that would be within the board. So. Um, we're going to make, I guess we're going to make our function here in the app, right? Um, maybe I'll move this around at another point, but I, it just makes sense to me to do it this way. So like we, we would do like let add board, uh, add board equal um, a function. And what this is going to do is we're going to uh, take in a board object, and we're going to pass that to an immer function, which we'll write up in a little bit, and then we'll update our board state with the return. Um, there, okay. So nothing too crazy. And I'm gonna need this to give me some data back. When we pass this function in, we'll pass this function down as a prop to our add new board modal. And when we run this function, it needs to send back our board object, right? So let's import, uh, I think it's just board in my interface file, board, which is name and columns, right? Um, columns with an array, right? So we just wanna, I'm gonna import board from my interface, which is in my, uh, actually, I should be able to do that. No, sorry. Mm. Slash my utilities and my interface. Okay. Because when we pass an object in, we're going to say new board, right? That'll be our parameter and we will type that as our board type. So we know that new board uh, is a board type, which should have name, which is a string, and columns, which is an array of columns, which lives in the interface and blah, 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 blah. So let's do this piece by piece. So we've got our function. Let's pass this over to, man, this is a mess to look at. I'm sorry. Um, let's pass this over to our board modal which is here, and let's let's bring let's break this out just a little bit just to make this. Is that gonna collapse on me again? Okay, cool. So I'll pass this in, which is add board equals our add board function, and it's freaking out because I haven't added a prop yet. Uh, let me copy what this is because it's a it's a technically a, a void return on this thing. Uh, so we go in here to our props that we have set up, add our add board dealy, and then we can bring that in. Uh, destructure add board, which is great. Go ahead. And then when we click on the create new board button, which is down here, uh, we're not doing this anymore. 
we're going to do add board, which I just can I do. I have to make like so I can't, of course, if I'm calling a, if I'm passing in anything, I have to do this, right? Uh, and then we're going to do add board where we need to pass in whatever our board is going to be, right? And right now I don't have that. Um, so I'm going to have to do this a little bit differently, actually, because the first thing we need to do within this modal is combine our two different states into a board object, right? So let's instead, let's do um, let send board equal. We'll do a function here for this, uh, right? Where we're going to combine our states into a board object, send, uh, and then we'll send back with the uh, add board function or to the add board function technically, right? So instead of doing this, we're just gonna make this send board. Cool. And then up here, we're going to, number one, combine our states, blah, blah, blah. Number two, send the board, right? So let's do, what's up here? Oh, this doesn't know what a board type is. So let's take in board from interface. There we go. Wonderful. Um, so we've got, I don't, do I need to copy all this stuff or can I just take the state and come like, cause they're, they're both objects. We're not changing the objects at this point. They're just referencing to each other. I don't know. Maybe we try that first and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then we copy and stuff like we've been doing. So, um, uh, we will, um, let's just give it a shot and do let board equal, um, our board object here is going to be our name It's an object with name and then column. So it's an object with name, which is going to be our board name and then the columns which is going to be our columns object or array, right? And let's see if this works. Um, I don't even need to do let, well, yeah, we'll make that a board and then we'll do um, add board, oops, add board of our, with our new object board. All right, so that's what that's doing. We're combining our, our states into um, a variable we're calling board and we're sending it back and let's just test this to see if it does what we want it to do. Uh, we'll do console.log board. Uh, sorry, new board. That's what we're calling it on the way in here. Uh, which I guess just for the sake of keeping things uh, kind of similar over here, right? And what are you, oh, it's just slow because of the lag. Okay, so we've got our stuff over here. We'll give this a name of test board. We've got one, let's do two, and let's do three. And if I click create new board, we should get a console.log of our objects with the board name and our columns array of objects. Excellent, cool. That's That was all that was really doing for us to start. So now I'm done with the functionality within this modal. Like I said, we'll still go back and we'll fix this to make it look correct. Um, but now what we need to do is take our new board object that we're pulling in here and send this over to Emmer. Um, so I have all of my functions that are adjusting this giant state, this giant nested state. All of my functions are living in this Emmer functions file. Um, which was just my preference on setting this up. I'm only importing Emmer into one place and it all lives right here. This file is responsible for updating um, or, or let's, just, let's just say changing, uh, making our changes to this giant nested object, sending those changes back. And then we update state within wherever we're sending that back to. So um, I have a comment to make an add board here. So we're gonna do uh, export let add 
uh, new board, we'll call it, equals a, a function. And this is where our code's going to go. So we're going to need this file to receive, like we're doing up here, um, we're going to need it to receive the board data, which is of type board data. And we're also going to need this to receive our new board, which is of type board. And I don't, did I already import that here? No, it doesn't look like I did. So let's do that from my interface. Great. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we, when we're using Immer, we're going to return this back to a variable. So we're going to do a let updated board equal, and we call their produce function. We pass in our board data, and we pass in another variable. We're just going to call this draft, which is what's going to be updated. Uh, and that gets a function. So then we can do our basic stuff here. So we can do draft dot boards. I don't, well, let's, let's look at my big old JSON file. And let's kind of run through what we're doing here. I've done this enough now that I'm like, I get, I get what the object is, but I want to show it. So this is our giant object, which is now in called drafts in this case, um, drafts dot boards, because that's the object. That's the key here, boards of this object, boards, draft dot boards. And we've got an array here, right? And all we're doing is we're pushing this updated board object onto this array. So this one's super simple. All I have to do here is dot push. And we just need to push on our, uh, what do I call this, new board that we're receiving into this function. And that's it. Um, what does this say? Type of board is not assignable to blah, 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 blah. Um, I believe you're wrong <laughs> TypeScript in this particular case. Uh, I, I don't know if it's just the way it's reading draft or something, but we're gonna just leave that as is because it should work fine for me. If it doesn't, we'll figure it out. Um, and then what we do is we're gonna return the value of updated board, right? So this is making this nice and easy so I don't have to go through and copy every single level of this gigantic object. Immer is doing all of that for me because state is immutable and you can't update state in React without making a new copy of your object or your array and then passing that copy back to our setter function. So we make those updates here. We return updated board. We're gonna send updated board back, right? So let's, uh, what did I just call this function <laughs> before I walk away? Uh, we called it add new board. So we will, uh, I don't have anything from Immer already on this. Let me get rid of this. We'll import add new board from my, uh, do, 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 from my Immer, which is in utilities, my Immer functions. So in this, we're going to call, uh, we'll do let result equals add new board, right? That's what we called it. And we pass in, we need to pass in the board data, right? That's our first argument. And then the new board that we receive, which is that object. And then we don't need to console out new board anymore. We need to uh, take my setter function, which is set board data, and we need to update that with result. All right, we're not going to console.log anything here. We're just going to hit the button and hope it works and take a look. So let's start from scratch here. I'm going to close this out, uh, assuming that all my stuff's going to work out correctly. Maybe this is a chance. We've got our boards here. All these are working fine. We create new board. We enter a name, test board name. We add some columns, one, two, three, four. Oops, I made a mistake, let's get rid of three. So we'll have one, two, four. I create new board. And of course, what did I do?
Did I just not click on that? Oh, I'm clicking. All right, what's happening? Uh, let's see. So on click send board, we're calling send board, which makes our new board. Then calls add board with our new board. Which takes add board, which sends in our new board data and our new board, which then updates our result. Let's do a test here. Let's see what's going wrong by, instead of sending new board, I'm gonna make a board object and I'm gonna do name of, I don't know, test, and I'm gonna do tasks, right? And this is just gonna be, not tasks, columns, columns. See, it's yelling at me, which is nice, TypeScript. Um, columns is an array of, let's do two objects here. Um, let's, well, we'll do, what do these consist of? Uh, name, which is test, uh, test column, and tasks, which is an empty array. So if I call add board, instead of actually passing through whatever we're putting in this, oh, wow, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> it's the lag. It's the lag. It's the lag. I didn't do anything wrong. It's the lag. Let's undo all this. Because of course, screen recording is making this harder for me. So let's do this again. <laughs> oh man, I can delete boards here, can I? Somehow, I don't remember how I was doing that. Let's refresh this so we get rid of all that data. Um, there's no pertinence here right now. It's just, uh, I'm not updating the file anywhere else, it's just updating in state, right? So create new board, <laughs> test board name. We've got one, we've got two, we've got three, we've got four. Oops, we've got one, two, four. Create new board, uh, which I guess what might be happening here, I'm just gonna give it a second and I think, um, what is happening here? It just showed up a second ago, now what? Okay, these aren't relevant to what I'm doing. What just happened there? <laughs> okay. I mean, clearly that worked a second ago. Let's take another look here at what's happening. Let's do our console.log of our new board. Let's also, before we even set board data, let's do console.log of our result. Oh man, it is just really the lag. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> now it showed up. So we know it's working. <sighs> this is gonna be a challenge if I'm trying to do these videos and the, uh, the larger functionality here is just gonna be hindered by lag. So, but I don't know. Um, we we know it's working. We know we know the stuff is doing what it's supposed to do. And when I add a board, it should re-render the board itself, which should I think make our um, our task modal unmount, or I mean, add board modal unmount. I what do I do? Just <laughs> try this again and. Um, I have to fix this floating uh, thing here as well, but what do I do? Just try this again and then just wait and edit this out? Maybe, let's see.
Let's let's uh let's refresh this one more time. I can hear my computer fan going bananas when it's doing this. So uh, here's our test. Let's just do one and two just to save ourselves a little bit of time. Uh, you know what? I still want to do this test of the three and then blanking out the two. I don't know why. So I clicked create board. I'm not going to click anything else. Oh, <laughs> but also, but also I commented out my set board result. So I don't need this stuff. It's, it is working. Let's just go through here. Let's do this one more time. Create new board. I'm just going to sit here for a second. Let's go ahead and let's try to, <clears throat> besides calling add new board, we're also going to, because maybe this is part of it, we're going to do set, set show add board, set show add board to false, right? Because that should also, sending our board should, why is this just not... <laughs> Hmm. All right. Let's let's do the console.log stuff. It's either part to do with the lag or something. So let's do our console.log. See, now they're showing up. It's something about the way we're re-rendering here, right? Because if I do, oh, if I inspect this, if I put the console on here. <laughs> If we create a new board, if we do another, whatever this is, we add a column or two, we create a new board. I'm calling back my boards array. I'm logging my boards array. And there it is. There's the new board that we added, right? Again, I'm not, I didn't do my set board data update here, but we know it's coming back correctly. Um, so I guess one final thing I guess I could do, because this is not, oh, I know what's happening. <laughs> okay, here's a bug, um, caused by me and nothing else. This is not state. <laughs> um, well, it is. It is state, but it's not being updated correctly. So what's happening here is in the app, the high level of the app, I'm using use effect to once we mount everything, it's mapping through my board data and it's making an array of names, which is this. And I'm passing that array of names down to my nav bar, right? Here's my board names. Um, Right, which is I'm setting board names, I'm making an array here and then setting it. So I'm never updating that state when I update the board. So in order to fix that, it's not the lag. <laughs> in order to fix that, I need to add uh, onto my use effect for it to be required to update any time that uh, board data updates, which actually that's probably a lot. But 
we'll we'll do that for now. Maybe I change the way that this works in the future. But now if we do this and we do um, another another one, and we add some columns here, one and two and three and oops one three, and we create new board. There we go. That was the issue the whole time. There's another one. Here's one and three. I can add new task for this. The test task, uh, whatever description, subtasks, it's just whatever. And we put this in, let's put this in three to start. That's all working. Okay, of course. Hey, cool. This is the stuff that we wanted to do, right? And see the process of, oops, I'm just being a goof and messing stuff up um, and making it work. Man, I need a break. I think this has gone on long enough and I need to, um, I'll record myself doing the, the CSS updates just to close this out, right? I don't know. Can I just do it real quick? It's, it'll be fast. Let's just do it. Um, so let's, I'll do this and I'm, then I'm done coding for a little while. We'll look at board modal. Uh, is everything else still done? Did I take out all my nonsensical? Okay. Um, so we have board modal. We made a columns div over here. Um, let's bring up our CSS. Let's please bring up our CSS down here. There we go. And I'm going to have this as an ID of board modal. Let me find where that first one is. Board dash modal. There you are. And all my IDs of board modal are together right here. Um, I'll go to the bottom of these before I do more task modal stuff. And we'll do board modal and our thing here is, what do we call this? Columns. Let's just make sure we're selecting that correctly with background color red. Okay, so I'm selecting that particular div. Um, and what I want this to be, how does this look specifically? It's just a longer column and it's got my buttons over there. Um, you know what I did do already? Um, I did this with the add task, right? So I'm not going to repeat myself in CSS. I, I'd prefer not to repeat myself in CSS. Um, at least not typing all this stuff out. Uh, you know what? It's good practice. Let's just do it. Um, so that's our whole thing of board modal columns. Um, we've got the board modal columns. Um, let's let's call the let's make this display a flex. Right, do I need to? Eh, not really. Right? It's they're there next to each other. Um, columns. It is the uh, the input of that. Can I make sure I'm doing that correctly? Back on color red. Yeah, cool. That's that. Um, can I do width of let's say let's what does ninety percent look like? That looks relatively okay. Um, I can set a uh, a margin right on this thing to push that button out a little bit further. I don't know. What does it look like in Figma? Um, let's undo my box drawings here. Let's take a quick look at... Uh, I'm still laughing about that state thing. Uh, let's click down into this element, and I want to see how far away this X is. That's a 16 pixel distance, and I'm assuming it's probably the same on the mobile view. Um, so we'll call that 16 pixels. We push that out a little bit. Okay. Um, that's that. And then we'll change that button. Board modal, not columns, button, right? Uh, which is not going to have a background. Um, oops. Background none. It's not going to have a border. No, 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 no. Border none. And that is almost good enough for me. What is the actual width of this? 
40. I mean, it, it lines up a little bit more, so let's call this 90, 95%. The reason I'm putting this as a percentage is, I, ooh, 95 is way too much, so let's do 90. Um, if this does change size, I forget if this particular thing changes size. Oh, it does on um, mobile views. That 90 is not working out for us. So can I just leave this at, at 80? Would that be good enough? Can I do 85? That looks okay. I'm not trying to... Well, I'm just going to leave this for right now. Um, maybe what I'll do is push this out a little bit more. Uh, or what might be better. Yeah, you know what? That looks fine. I could set these at different. Um, I, I already have the... I can't. I can't just sit there and not make this look right. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna just do a real quick adjustment in. Um, well, actually, that looked better in the mobile view, right? That looks good in mobile view. Let's just go ahead and copy this down in wherever my tablet view is, which is my first uh, media break. There's my tablet styling. What is this board modal? Do we have a board modal thing in here? I probably don't. I'm just going to pop this on the bottom just for right now, just so that um, just so that that's set. Uh, I might go clean that up later, but I really want to be done with this recording at this point. <laughs> okay, that looks fine. Cool, we did it, start to finish. Uh, hiccups and all. Um, I, I don't think I'm, I, I might do a very slight edit to take out a little bit of silence while I waited for what I thought was lag. Uh, but besides that, this is start to finish fun, fun time. So hopefully you enjoy this one. Uh, see you in the next one.